So now that we have Logstash installed and configured, all we have to do is run it. And that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is CD into the directory where Logstash is installed. And on Ubuntu, that's under user share Logstash. And from there, we can just run Logstash under the bin folder with a single argument, dash F, that specifies the path to the configuration file that we just created. And this way you can run Logstash with different configuration files for different things you might want to do, different combinations of input and output plugins. So let's just dive in and do it. All right, so at this point we should have Logstash installed and configured, and we should have an Apache access log file that we downloaded in our home directory. That's the access log file there. Take a quick peek at it. And you can see that it is in fact a standard Apache access log from a website that I happen to own. So that's what we're gonna play with. We're going to use Logstash to read that file and push it into Elasticsearch. So since everything is set up, all we have to do is run Logstash. So let's start by CDing into where Logstash is installed on Ubuntu. That's gonna be under user share Logstash. Take a look at what's in there. And under the bin folder is where you're gonna find Logstash itself. So all we have to do is say sudo bin slash Logstash dash f for the configuration file path which we saved under slash etc slash log stash slash conf dot d slash log stash dot conf all right and that's all there is to it so let's go ahead and kick that off and see what happens after authenticating it might take a minute to spin up log stash isn't exactly zippy in getting started but uh, give it some time And off it goes. You can see that we are echoing the output to standard output here to our console using the Ruby codec. And you can see the individual log entries rolling by here. This is pretty awesome. So it's actually extracting those cryptic lines of Apache access log information and extracting all these fields from them automatically. It's uh, sucking out things like the agent and host and the actual request itself. And you can just see that scrolling by as it actually inserts these one event at a time into our Elasticsearch index. And if you give this a minute or two, it should eventually get through everything in that access log and import it all into our Elasticsearch index. Okay, it's finally caught up and it's just sitting there now because it's made its way through everything in that access log. If more data were to get written into that log though, it would pick it up automatically and publish that into Elasticsearch as it's written, which is kind of cool. But we're done for now, so let's just hit Control C to actually get out of Logstash. And now we're back to our prompt. So let's uh, see what actually got inserted there. Let's take a look at what indices now exist in our Elasticsearch cluster, our cluster of one computer here. Let's do a curl dash x get 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash underscore cat slash indices question mark V. And that's how we actually get a listing back of all the indices in Elasticsearch. And check that out, we have some new ones, Logstash 2017.0504, 0501. Basically we have a new index for every day of data that is in that access log. So that's kind of cool how it automatically split that out. And we have index names for each individual day. There's a method to that madness, by the way. That's a, uh, a good strategy for managing your data. You can just delete older days of data as you don't need them and allow new ones to come in. So that's a good way of sort of making sure you don't fill up your cluster. So let's pick one of these and see what's actually inside of them. Let's say a curl dash x get single quote 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash log stash dash, I don't know, 2017.05.02. Let's pick that one. And we'll say slash underscore search. And we want pretty formatted results. And they'll just give us, give us back everything that's in that particular index, which should be a lot of data. Uh, and here you can see the actual structured data that got imported into Elasticsearch here. So here's one document. Uh, it was a automatically given a type of logs. It had a unique ID automatically assigned. And you can see in the actual data itself that that access log line got split up into its request, its agent, its auth ident verb, its get path that was actually requested, the refer, which in this case is empty, the timestamp, the response code, all that good stuff. And that all got automatically parsed out and structured and imported into Elasticsearch. And that was pretty easy to do, right? I mean, that's kind of awesome. So a lot of complex stuff happened here, but it was all very easy to set up and very easy to run. That's what Logstash is for. So there you have Logstash actually processing a real Apache access log and importing that into a real Elasticsearch set of indices, one for each day of data. Awesome.